What is it about their obsession with sex and sexualizing children? These perverse pride parades. Has nobody told them that pride is in fact a sin? And now we see footage again and again and again of these pride parades with people doing obscene and lewd things in front of minors, in front of children. And then the, the drag queen thing in Texas of all places. What, what are children doing at these events? And what is the goal of the people behind the transgender extremism? Let's talk to a friend of mine who's been fighting the good fight, telling the truth, pushing back on the perversions. He is the author of a fabulous book, Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds. Michael Knowles, welcome to the Gorka Reality Check. Great to be with you, sir. Thanks for having me. Michael, where, where does this all begin? Where, where does the, the desire, what is the objective, and why, why are they targeting children, minors? You know, our mutual friend Andrew Clavin loves to quote Hemingway, who said that things happen gradually, then suddenly. Uh, we're in the suddenly part right now, but the gradually part has been building for a long time, almost 100 years. The left has had an interest in sexualizing children going back a long, long way. This goes back at the very least to a 20th century intellectual named Wilhelm Reich, who believed that all of the problems in the world, from war to disease to everything in between, was caused by, forgive my language, a lack of orgasms. I'm not joking. And he created a device called the Orgone Accumulator, which people would go and sit in. I don't know what they thought it was going to do. It was mocked in the movies as the Orgasmatron, but many left-wing intellectuals bought into this thing. Norman Mailer, J.D. Salinger, a lot of people. Bernie Sanders was writing essays about how we need to accustom young people, little kids, to sexual encounters. He was writing these in the 60s. You can still read the essays in the Ver Vermont Freeman. And, and then, and so they've been course, pushing this for a long and then time. A, 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 and then along comes Kinsey and then continues this perversion, gets fetid by the quote unquote intelligence in the commentariat and they're on a roll. OK, let's talk about I watched recently, uh, thanks to your colleagues at The Wire, I watched the new film by your colleague Matt Walsh, What is a Woman? Everybody needs to see it. It is absolutely superlative. And I want to play one clip that I think gets to the heart of what needs to happen. So this is a member of the Penn State swim team. She's been anonymized because she's afraid of her future. And she's talking about Leah Thomas, the man who's pretending to be a woman on that swim team. Let's play the cut. There was a lot of things you couldn't talk about that were very concerning, like a locker room situation. If you even brought up concerns about it, you were transphobic. If you even bring up the fact that Leah swimming might not be fair, you were immediately shut down as being called a hateful person or transphobic. But there's never any. So if they try and raise the issue of having a man with male parts walking around naked in the female changing room, they get accused as teammates of the college team of being transphobic. Michael, tell me if I'm wrong here. The issue is courage. After two years of COVID, after political correctness, after cancel culture, men should be standing up, should be, as my colleague Charlie Kirk said, at those swim meets, the fathers on the bleachers, when they see Leah Thomas, they should get up and make a human wall in front of the pool and say, that man does not get to swim in that pool with my daughter. Why isn't it happening, Michael? I think it's because the patriarchy wins in the end. No, maybe that's not it. That, that is, though, one of the lessons here. It's a, total, it's a total assault on feminism or anything even resembling a women's movement. And it, the reason that, that uh, you're seeing this happen right now, by the way, is because you've got these two competing claims. You've got the claim of the confused men who say that we have the right to go use the women's locker room. And then you've got the claim of the women who say, no, we have the right to get changed with 
without seeing a naked man in our locker room. And so which is it? I, I think as long as we prattle on about rights and entitlement and feelings and subjectivity, we're not going to get anywhere. The question we've got to ask, and you alluded to it earlier in the show, is about the truth. What is the reality here? For Matt's movie, what is a woman? What is what is the true biological, philosophical part of our nature. And then we've got to, we've got to organize society according to that. And, and if we don't have that, by the way, if we totally throw objective reality out the window, that means we can't help have self-government. It means we can't even communicate with one another. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why your book is called Speechless. Uh, lastly, uh, you're a man of faith. Uh, I think we have to say the truth here. This is diabolical. This is a demonic assault on the building block of Western civilization, which is the family. They're only trying to sexualize children, Michael, because that's how they destroy the connection between child and parent. You concur? Absolutely. You know, the fact that now some people are identifying with plural pronouns, they'll say my pronoun is they and them. The last place I saw that was in the Gospels. My name is Legion for we are many. This is obviously demonic yes. stuff and we should call it like we see it. Yeah. God bless you. Yes. Legion. Well, well put. The book is Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds. And please check out Matt Walsh's new movie, The Incredible, The Brave, What is a Woman? at The Daily Wire.